Welcome to Technical Founders. My name is Carlos Lara, AI Technical Founder, and today we will learn how to create a character level LSTM with PyTorch. Now, this network will train character by character on some text, then generate new text character by character. So it will take in an input sequence of characters and output a sequence of characters the next in, in, in the sequence like this. So as an example, we will train on Anna Karenina, the book. This model will be able to generate new text based on the text from the book. So that's, it's going to be fun, fun to do because these are very uh, beautiful networks here, character level LSTMs. So here's the basic structure. Here we have our, our input characters, a sequence. In this simple case is the word hello as, uh, as input. And it, each character is fed into the network at each time step. So each character at once. And it's fed in as a one hot encoded vector here. So for all the unique characters in our input sequence, in the word hello, it's only H, E, L, and O. So four le um, unique letters in, the, in that sequence. And we're going to generate a one hot encoded vector where the corresponding uh, character that that, that that happens to, to, to be has a one uh, on, for it and then zeros for everything else. So, that, so that's how, we, uh, that's the structure of a one hot encoded vector. So we feed in one, goes into our hidden layer onto our LSTM layer, and then it produces both an output and a, hi a hidden state that goes into the next, the next time step because we want to keep track of all the characters that have come before. That's a whole point of using this kind of a recurrent neural network. So our output here will be a softmax uh, uh, class, uh, out, output here, which will output the neck the also the the same shape as our one hot encoded uh, vector for and but then a probability for each one of those char characters. And initially, before training, it might pick one. Uh, uh, it's, this is there's something that we want a particular character, and initially the network might not be well trained. But as we train, we'll increase the probability for the, the actual character that we want, the next desired character. So this is the basic structure here. And we have our, our weights here connecting the input to the hidden layer. And then the, the weights, the weights tensor here connecting the hidden layer to itself through each time step. And then the, the one connecting the hidden layer, this tensor connecting the hidden layer to the output layer here. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So we'll load our, our required resources here, NumPy, Torch, etc. Now we're going to load in our, our data from our Anna Karenina uh, text file that we have. So we're going to just say with open this, this text file, it's read only, and then we're just going to read that text and store it in a variable. So that's, that's our text uh, that we are going to be uh, training on. So first of all, we want to create uh, dictionaries that map a character to, to, an, to, a, to an integer, unique characters to integers and, and vice versa. Because for our network, again, we don't just input the words directly. We input a numeric representation of those words. That's how our network will, will, will learn. So here, we're, from our text that we loaded here, we're going to create a set out of it, meaning we're just going to get the unique characters in that text and then just create a tuple out of them. So here we have our characters. Now, we're going to create an integer to character dictionary. So here, basically, based on an integer, we're going to get, get a character. And then also we want a dictionary that takes in a character and then gives us a, uh, the corresponding integer. So here we're going to enumerate our, our char characters tuple. So for each unique character in our, in our set here, in our text, we're going to assign an, an integer here. And then we're going to create a dictionary out of that. So the key will be the integer and then the the value will be the, the character. And then here we do the same thing, but in reverse for a character to integer. So we, we grab our integer to character dot item. So we get those the elements in those dictionary. So we can do this uh, list comprehension type of syntax here. So we have our dictionary here. We grab the uh, the index, the integer and the character and then that in our previous dictionary and we just flip them. So now the, the character will be the key and the value will be the actual integer. So we have our two uh, uh, dictionaries here to go back and forth between character uh, and integer and vice versa. And now we're going to, to create an, an encoded version of our, our text. So for, and then again, we're going to do a list comprehension here. So for each character in the, in the text, we're going to use that character, character as the key in, in our character to index, uh, to integer, a dictionary and grab that that integer. So we're going to create a list of integers uh, co corresponding to the characters in that text, and that's a NumPy array. So that's our encoded. 
uh, vector. So if we just print out here the first 100 characters, we see that's the first line in the book. And according to the American Book Review, this is the sixth best first line of a book ever. So that's our, our text in characters. And now this is our encoded one um, that we created, our encoded version of our of our input text. And it's just it's the same, but, it, but for each character, we have a corresponding uh, integer here. So that's that's our encoded version, numeric version of our input. And that's what we're going to be to be working with. So now we're going to do some pre-processing of, of our data. So as we said before, uh, our network is taking as input um, one hot encoded vectors for, e for each character. So here we just create a function that does that one hot encodes uh, uh, an array, a NumPy array that, that, that comes in here. And feel free to pause here to see how, how this function is working. But again, it's just creating one hot encoded vector here. Remember the length will, of this of this one hot encoder vector will be all of the unique characters, uh, the length of the unique characters in our in your vocabulary here, and then you'll have a one for the corresponding one and zeros for everything else. So that's our function here. It creates our one hot encoded vectors for input. Now we also want to make training mini batches. So here, I mean, suppose here to keep it simple. Suppose we have a starting sequence of of twelve characters. For our book, we have a lot more vastly more, of course, but here, suppose we have 12. Now, because in general, it might be a very, very long just input sequence, we don't want to feed it all at once. So we still want the concept of batching, batch size and batching our, our input sequences here. So suppose we have 12 here. If we choose a batch size of two, it's going to split this initial sequence into two parts. So since it's 12, the first one is going to be a length of six and the second one length of six here. One through six, seven through 12, as you can see. But even this may not be enough. These may still be way too long. So we want to uh, split them even further. So we want to also define a sequence length. So our batches is not only the quote unquote batch size here, it's also the sequence length. So once we have the batches, we want to now shorten them even more. And, and we're, this is how we're going to feed it into our network, into these uh, min, mini batches here of a given sequence. And these batch size and sequence lengths sequence length are hyperparameters that you can choose that you can tune but here we're going to feed it into our network in these uh, sequence lengths of three based on our already smaller batch size and our initial sequence and that's how it's going to go into into our network and created some there's some uh, description here on how to create the batches um, you can uh, pause and just uh, just at your own pace see how, how how that works but we use this to create our get batches uh, function here and this is say a generator is going to generate um, our features and our labels so our features and labels are both characters and as we said we want the the inputs x to be our our characters our sequence of of, uh, of characters and then the labels will be so the next characters in the sequence, so suppose for the for the word hello, for example, just keep it very simple. So for the word H will be the input in, in X, and then the, the Y, the label will be E, because in the word hello, E is the next or, uh, letter in the sequence. So for our text that we have here, we're just going to create uh, our, our X and Y here in batches. So what we're going to do first is we're, we're going to grab our, our batch size and our batch size is actually the number of sequence times the number of steps corresponding to, to, to these two. So our batch size is combining uh, these two, multiplying them. Uh, together. That's what we call our batch size. Now we only want to keep enough characters to make full batches. So for our number of batches, we just grab, just complete, uh, make make full batches. And from our array, uh, from our full input, we just grab enough characters to make full batches. And then again, feel free to pause, see how this, how we have uh, uh, this function structure, but essentially we're just returning uh, X and Y, so batches, where Y is just shifted by one, or, or the same sequence of characters X, but just shifted by one, because we want, again, the it there that's how they're structured the input x and the and the output y the the labels the only difference is that the y sequence is shifted by one because the output uh for what any given input the output the next output is the next character in this in that same sequence so that's what that's how we create those two and here we can just test it out let's let's define our batches get batches we pass in our encoded uh ve vector here after we turn them into into numbers and then we just pass the parameters here, which are, again, the number of sequences uh, and the number of steps for how we're going to batch it. We picked uh, 10 and 50 here. And let's get our 
our, our net, let's call next here, wrap our batches in next. So from our generator, we can get values. So we get our X and Y, and let's go ahead and print out um, uh, a section of those of those X and Y. So as you can see, uh, we have these, these numbers, and as you can see, Y, for so this is X and for Y, it's these numbers, but just shifted by one. So what comes after 28? 76. So we have the 76. What comes after 76? 36 right and so on so if you so if you just take a look here at these sequences uh the only difference is that um, that y is just x shifted by one and that's how we're going to uh, define our batches our, our, our data for training so now we're going to define our network with pytorch and as you again as you can see here we have our input uh, sequenced characters one by one and the output is the next character in the sequence so here it's going to go in through our input layer and then going through our uh, lstm cells here and here we have two layers two lstm layers here in our lstm uh, part of our network here so two layers and it's the same it's just a little bit more 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 complex to, to grab more 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 information on our sequences and then we're going to have a at each time step a softmax function that outputs a, a probability distribution here of, of class scores and we're going to grab the one with the highest uh, probability to be our next one when we're doing a prediction because we, we're going to be generating text and here whenever for our trained model our softmax will be outputting a distribution and we're going to be grabbing the highest probability ones so now we're going to define the architecture of our network, and here for the model structure, we have uh, we can you can just pause and see uh, see what what we what we have here. Just some helper text. Now, here for our LSTM, as we as we as we as we learned before, we it has several parameters here for for a particular one. We have an input size, so the the, the shape for our LSTM, the vocabulary size, and then the 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 dimensions of our hidden layer here our hidden layers for our LSTM layers, and then the number of layers and layers. So here in, the, in our case, we'll do two, and then a dropout probability, because we're going to add some dropout. And then, so let's go ahead and, and look at the code. So we'll create a class here called character RNN, inherits from NN.module, standard in PyTorch. We're going to define our constructor here, our init function. It's going to take in this parameter. So here, the tokens is really, is just uh, the, the unique characters. So that's going to be the input. And then also we have our number of, of, of steps here, 100. Um, for when we're defining our batches, our hidden size for uh, for our hidden layer, 256, and, and so on. These are just some, some default uh, values in our learning rate, of course. So we're going to save off these uh, these parameters. And of course, don't forget to call uh, the, the base class, initialize the base class. And now we're going to be creating our dictionaries as we did before here within our, our, our instance of our network. So we're going to start off our, our characters, our tokens as our characters. And then these are the unique characters, our set of unique characters, so the vocabulary essentially. And then same thing as we did before. We're, we're going to create our dictionaries into char to character and character to int, uh, diction dictionaries just like before so we can go back and forth. And now we're going to define our LSTM network. So from PyTorch, we're going to grab nn.lstm pass the length of this of self dot character so the length of the unique characters and again the hidden dimension the size the number of layers dropout probability and then set the batch batch first flag to true and we're going to define a dropout layer here to reduce the chance of overfitting so we're going to grab a dropout layer here from torch and n pass in the dropout probability that was is one of our parameters and then to find the final fully connected output layer. So we're going to grab uh, from torch and end dot linear. And then the the input here, the, the first parameter will be the, the output size for from our LSTM, which is n hidden here. And then the output will be the length of self dot uh, characters because the output will be a softmax probability distribution. So probability for each one of those, of ev for every character on, on our set. And we do want the highest probability. And initial let's also save our init weights function here too so we can initialize weights as you can see our initialize weights uh function per, per, pretty standard initialize our initialize our weights and bias and also here we have a function to initialize our the hidden state here that tuple so there we go that's what we have for when we initialize now we have our forward function here 
and now the inputs are x and the hidden state so our, our input tensor and and the hidden state so we have our self.lstm and we're just going to pass in uh, x here our input tensor and then our our tuple here our, our hidden state that contains yeah, the hidden state in the cell memory so and the output will be will give us the x will be the output again so it's going to be uh, feeding into itself right the state that we'll go, we're going to be getting a state and an output at each at each time step here uh, and then we're going to be uh, passing x through our dropout layer here and then pretty standard and then we're going to be passing through our fully connected layer so now we have to reshape our tensor here uh, so the, so we combine these two dimensions into one and then for this for the second uh, parameter here on view we're past the uh, self dot n hidden so the size of our of our hidden uh, layer here and that's what our fully connected uh, layer expects uh, to be the the shape of our tensor x so we we just pass it in self dot fully connected pass it in get the output and then we're just going to return that for a forward function uh, here and then we're just going to keep to to, to keep doing that and that's how we're, we're going to be uh, training our net well we'll come to training in a moment but that's the forward pass of the network and then here we have a a predict a predict function here uh, so that's how so given a character we are going to predict the next character in that in, in that sequence so, so this function is going to return the predicted character and a hidden state so 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 pretty standard here so we have if so if CUDA we're going to to move it to CUDA otherwise CPU um, initialize our hidden state if it's not if we don't have one now we're going to create a numpy array here for for our input and we're going to grab our character so that we have only one character here every time you call predict coming in and then we're going to grab the integer here um, from from the dictionary and then create a numpy array out of that and then we're going to one hot encode that numpy array so we're going so the length uh, of that array will be the length so the unique number of characters and then we have x so we're going to have a one for, for that character and then zero for everything else so that's how we get our one hot encoded vector here and then for our inputs here we have to convert it to a pytorch tensor so here we have x as is, is a, a numpy array so just call torch from numpy so create say pytorch tensor out of a numpy array so that's our inputs so we're using cuda to go to cuda uh, call cuda on that so it moves into the to gpu and then here we're going to create our our hidden our hidden state here our tuple here and then we're just going to call self dot forward here on our on our neural network pass in the inputs here our ten, our our pytorch tensor that we created and our tuple here the hidden state and the cell memory and it's, and we're going to get uh, an output and the hidden and the hidden state back and now here with the output we want to call f dot softmax or remember we're getting a probability distribution of class score so we're going to get do a softmax on that along the dimension one along the 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 possible the possible um, along the possibilities the classifications here so we have our probabilities and again this is just simple if, if CUDA um, make sure that you're coming back to the CPU bringing them back to the CPU and the top top K is just from all the, the from the the outputs here from our softmax we just want to grab the top uh, let's say the top five so that's what top k stands for this this parameter so how many do you want to take into consideration so if it's none you just grab all of them if um otherwise you just grab p dot top k so you just grab the top let's say let's suppose it's five you grab the top five prob uh, highest probabilities here and the course and the, and the corresponding characters and then we're just going to 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 squeeze the the dimensions of, of size one so the dimensions that we that we don't need those extra dimensions we're just going to squeeze them out and same for top characters and for the probabilities as well turn them to numpy and then squeeze those dimensions that we don't need those extra dimensions now for our, our actual character for our prediction we're going to just do a random choice here numpy.random.choice and we're just going to pass in the top the top uh, characters and then the, the probability for each for each character um, associated for each character so most likely we'll grab the highest probability from those from those top five the, the, the character corresponding to the highest probability and we're going to read re to return and by the way these are the when it was this character but it's the integer version of the care of the character it's just so conceptual we understand what's going on but now we want to for that integer we want to grab the corresponding character because that's what we want we want an actual character being returned and of course a state so each time you call you call this 
predict function passing in a character, it's going to return the next character with the highest probability after the network's been trained, ideally. So that's uh, that's how we how we set up our class here, our character RNN class. So here uh, we're going to now define our train function. So how we're going to train our network, and here we have uh, several arguments. So the first one, our character RNN network instance, and then the text data to train the network, number of epochs, you know, the, our typical hyperparameters, standard hyperparameters. So epochs, number of sequences, number of steps. So we can create batches here learning rate and then this clip is for gradient clipping you'll see in a moment it's just to prevent exploding gradient problem to clip just to clip uh, normalize just very large gradients and then validation fraction just how, how much data you want to use uh, a fraction of data to use for validation because we're not only using a train uh, training uh, doing the training we're also doing validation uh, periodically that's pretty standard you want to have a validation set and do validation passes periodically and then of course CUDA support. So we we put our network on train uh, training mode. Now we're going to define our gradient descent optimizer here. So we're going to grab torch.optim.atom. So the atom gradient descent optimizer pass in the network parameters and the learning rate here that we that we have. And then for our loss function, our criterion, we are going to use cross entropy loss because that's what we're doing. We're, we have soft max um, um, out, uh, output, so we're doing uh, cross entropy loss. Now we're, let's create our training and validation uh, data here, based based on our from our input. We're going, to, we're going to split it based on the input and the validation fraction. And again, feel free to to pause at any given time just to make sure that everything um, just makes sense. It's, it takes a moment just to 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 understand and, and think through it. But so if it's CUDA, we're going to move our network to GPU. And then for a number of characters, we're going to assign the length of the, the characters that we stored in our in our network uh, instance. So the, the length of our, so the, how many unique characters that we have. Now we're going to do our main loop here. So for E in the range of epochs, so we're going to grab, so create H, so initialize our hidden state um, here for our LSTM. And now we're going to to call, to call our generator, our get batches uh, function that we created uh, before, and then just get an, get an uh, X and Y here. And, and get batches and we're going to pass in our our data and then it's and the end sequences and end steps so it's going to as we learned as we saw before this function is going to create our x and y um, inputs here or our x and y data for our network batched in this according to these two uh, parameters here now make sure you so we're going to one hot encode our our vector here our input here based on the number of characters and then uh, so this is going to return NumPy array. So just make sure that we're actually uh, converting that uh, to um, to a PyTorch tensor. So call Torch from NumPy. Again, if it's CUDA, move them to the GPU, and then create our our hidden state here for for our LSTM. Zero the gradients. Make sure that we're zeroing the gradients here, and then just call the forward uh, method on on our network and pass in our our inputs here our PyTorch tensor and the hidden state that we created and it's going to give us an output and another and the hidden state back. Now for this output now we're going to pass it in and into our criteria into our loss function. So we're going to calculate the loss. So criterion we have our output here and then we're going to compare with the target so what we actually wanted it to give us. So targets we're going to reshape it because this criterion is expecting um, these two to be um, dimensions to go into one. So we're going to reshape it put these two um, uh, dimensions into into one basically the whole the, the real full bat, batch size together here and it also wants um let's say we're casting it to a torch.cuda long tensor because we're training on cuda here so make sure we we we, we cast it because it expects a, a long tensor type here we back propagate the, the, the loss here and this is we clip the gradient so if some gradients come out too large we're just going to 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 clip them and normalize them by this factor here um, one of our parameters here that we chose. And then just do op dot step. So our gradient descent just take take a step and so it can up so we update um, our our learnable parameters. And pretty standard here periodically, every certain um, amount of steps here, we're going to do a validation pass and print and print out some of the uh, statistics here to see how, how our network is doing. So feel free to pause, but it's pretty much the same as before. We're just doing it with our um, validation pass uh, validation. So 
we were going to be printing out some stuff. So now it's time to train. And I already trained it to save some time, train on a, on a GPU here. And as you can see, we're printing out periodically our, our training loss and our validation loss, and they're both going down steadily. So here we're going to initialize our character RNN to so we have our network, pass in our characters, our unique, the, our unique characters, our set of unique characters, and then the size of our LSTM of our hidden layer, um, of our hidden layers, which is 512 here, and then the number of layers, which is two, because again, we're doing a two LSTM layer stacked on each other, and we're going to print it out. So we have our character, character RNN here, our class instance that we created. We have our, our LSTM, and see the number of unique characters, and all of our text here for Anna Karenina book, it's 83 characters that we have, and then and hidden is and 512, number of layers two, batch size, and then our dropout here as well. This is the default values. We have our dropout layer uh, bef uh, in, be in between the LSTM and the fully connected layer. And this is the linear layer, finally, that will ultimately um, soft and give us our softmax output after um, the data passes through here, the output. And as you can see, the shape makes sense. So the input uh, shape for our linear layer is the output uh, shape here for our LSTM, which is 512. And, and then the output for the linear layer will be um, a, a vector of, cla of, of class scores here, prob a probability distribution for all of the, the, po the possible characters in, uh, th that we have, which is, which is 83. So for all of these 83, for this vector of 83 uh, characters, each one will have, a, will have a probability. And what we want is the highest probability one when we're predicting some, some, some text. So here we just call our train. Uh, uh, function here, pass in the and sequence and steps for, for our batches, how we're batching up um, our data, uh, epochs, our encoded um, um, data here that we created before, learning rate, CUDA set it to true, and and there we go. See, here we trained for, for 25 epochs. Uh, the losses kept going down, so now our network has, has, has learned and has, um, has trained on, on, on this data. So now, so typically we want to, we, so we get the, the, the best model. So again, we want to watch the training and validation losses. These are the hyperparameters. Feel free to pause here to, to, to read through some of this uh, nice, nice helper te uh, text. And uh, here we have some advice from Andre Carpathy, Carpathy, the director of AI at Tesla. So just some tips and tricks on how to monitor the validation loss and training loss and tune your hyperparameters based on um, on those losses and see how when you're overfitting, when you're underfitting, and just some some overall strategy in general. Feel free to pause and, um, and, and look through that. So after training, we save the, the model so we can load it again later if we need to. So here we're just saving our model name, saving the checkpoint, and calling torch.save here. So saving it to a file in our local directory. And we're storing here some of our hyperparameters, like the number of um, the dimensions of our LSTM, the number of layers, the state dictionary, so all of those weights and biases, all of those learned parameters, and then the token to so the, the unique uh, characters in our, in our data set. So now we're going to do some, some sampling here. So we're going to define a, a function here that is going to, to sample. So we're going to pass in uh, some initial characters and it's going to uh, to generate some, some text based on the size parameter. So here, pretty pretty simple. So we're going to, use, to grab two, 2,000 uh, characters. That's how much we want to generate. So here, first of all, we're going to run through the prime characters. So the, we're going to start our sequence with the, and then for each character and, and that we're going to grab, that's going to be our characters. And then initialize our hidden our hidden state here for our LSTM. Then for each character in prime, we're just going to do a prediction. So each character is going to go in into our predict uh, function in our network, and is going to give us an output. And then we're going to, uh, to to keep doing that. So and then we're going to pass in our top k here. So how the how many uh, from all those eighty three? What's the top probabilities that we want to focus on? And now for our characters, we're going to, we're going to append our character. So initially we only have the, and then for each uh, character output, we're going to be appending that. Uh, and that's how we're going to, to generate our, our sequence here. And then we're going to just return that. So here, so for, for I, 
in the range of size here. For, so whatever we passed in this, in our case, 2000, we're going to just go loop through and just keep calling our net.predict and keep generating our, our output, uh, output uh, characters and generate, generate some text after our network um, has learned. So as you can see here, we're generating some, some text and it's not perfect at times it doesn't make that much sense but it's amazing that our network has learned how to create words has learned how to where to put commas has learned uh the quotes the structure so it's already even in just 25 epochs it's learned quite a bit about this um anna karenina uh, book and text and how to gener generate text so i think that's that's pretty amazing and we're just focusing on the, the top five uh highest probabilities, probability um, characters for a given output here from our predict function. So very, 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 very nice. So this this shows us the, the power of an LSTM network of recurrent neural networks that are able to learn from text, learn long-term dependencies, uh, long-term um, features in the, in, the sequ in the sequences and generate uh, some uh, text that, that actually makes sense. So pretty amazing. Now here, just real quick, you can actually load the, the, the checkpoint that you saved and just create your character RNN based on those uh, uh, parameters those that, that you stored in your in your checkpoint uh, file. Then just load the state dictionary. So just load those those learned parameters. And you can just go ahead and make a prediction on, a, on your pre-trained model here and again, just pass in some uh, parameters for this, for this sample function. So here, if you pass in, for example, and Levin said, it's that's it's going to generate after that a bunch of text that follows uh, that. So yeah, there you go. So character level LSTM with PyTorch, a network that is able to generate text and um, character by character and learn from from text character by character. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, thoughts, comment below, and I will see you next time.